show you um, how to partition a WD Elements hard drive. So I've got a two terabyte WD Elements hard drive. Um, the hard drives are set mainly for PCs and I'm using a Mac. So what I want to do is show you how to partition it. Um, so you, you basically have to um, go through a process to partition it. Um, so what you're doing is you're switching from the PC format to a Mac format solely a Mac format or you can make it so that it's compatible with both PC and Mac which is probably the better option in this case because I'm using both Mac and PC when producing etc. So I tried using iCloud um, however with iCloud um, you, have, you have to pay for storage which is the, similar to when you're buying a hard drive but um, I had a few issues uploading some of the files to iCloud so I've, I've basically purchased a WD Elements um, I find it easier process where I can just transfer my stuff onto the hard drive, external hard drive that is. Um, so if anything was to go wrong on the, on the machines, any either machine, PC or the Mac, um, I've got my stuff backed up, um, which is the best way to do things guys, yeah. Um, Alright, so other than iCloud, all right, moving over here. Alright guys, so other than um, using iCloud, um, yes, so you can use the WD Elements. All right, moving over um, with Serato DJ Pro, there's certain spec requirements. So in this case, it says it actually warns you. Actually, it says some hardware is not supported uh, in Mac OS uh, 10.15. That's the most up to date um, update for Macs at this moment in time. Um, it said Mac OS 10 uh, 10.14. Um, no Java and a Mac OS 10.15 um, Catalina require additional configuration to allow full access to Serato DJ Pro. Click here to find out more. So that's something you could do. However, what I'm going to do is because I've got an earlier version of the Mac, um, if you click on Sof where it's next to where it says Safari on the left in, in this particular version of the Mac, you've got the Apple symbol. Click the Apple symbol and then click about this Mac. And what it does, it brings you into um, the specs for the Mac. All right, so this is the version, so Mac OS Sierra version 10.12.6. So Requirements, system requirements for Serato DJ Pro, right? Over here, it says 10.13. Alright, so 10.13 is what I want to get up to because between um, 10.14 and 10.15, there's a few issues as it, as it just warned you. Uh, on the screen, so I'm gonna play safe and go 10.1. So that's High Sierra. Um, yes, yeah, so doing a bit of research, finding out that High Sierra is probably um, the best version to upgrade to. So that's what I'm attempting to do, guys. All right, so that's that. All right, guys. So basically, you click on the Apple symbol, click about this Mac, which is below it, and then it says the specs for the Mac. So Mac OS Sierra version 10.12.6. So um, as I discussed, you need 10.13 um, or higher to use Serato DJ Pro. Yeah, it's very important, guys, um, that you understand this. Um, it tells you specs for PC, uh, Windows 10 um, is the main requirement for that. So anything less, less than Windows 10, you're going to have a hard time trying to operate Serato DJ Pro. Um, yeah, and I recommend you use a laptop so it's portable in the future. Um, so if you're going out, playing out, etc., in a you know, club or a house party or an event of whichever type, 
yeah, use your, your laptop to be compatible. Um, but there's also other options, um, port portability within Serato DJ Pro. Uh, check out the specs to find out more. All right, guys, so I'm going to move on. All right, guys, so um, this is what a WD Elements hard drive looks like. Yeah, so WD Elements hard drive. What I want to do is um, make it accessible for the PC and for the Mac. So you click up top right where it's got the magnifying sim symbol and open up spotlight search and type in disk utility. Yeah, it comes up. So you click on disk utility. All right, so once you open up disk utility, um, your page should look a little something like this. Um, over on the left hand side, um, I advise you, to, advise you please to ignore um, the top internal um, hard drive links yeah, because that will cause a problem to your computer. Um, in this case, we go to the external device. So I'm dealing with the WD element in this case. So what I want to do is um, make it accessible for Mac and PC. Uh, so we, we do erase and the data that's on there. But before you do that, make sure that you've got it set up for guide partition map. So guide partition map is important. And don't change to master boot record or Apple partition map. So guide partition map is what you want because we're gonna partition it. So you can use, um, say time, All right guys, so what I wanted to show you is that you can actually back up to Time Machine um, and you can actually partition it. So you can have your main hard drive um, where you've got your um, drop files, accessibility for PC and Mac, and then you have your Time Machine backup on a separate partition. Um, so yeah, so you click on, like I said, this utility. Um, you click on WD Elements. So WD elements will come up and then what we want to do is um, partition the hard drive. So, but before we partition it, right, what we do is we erase the hard drive. But if you want it to be just compatible with a Mac, then you click on Mac OS extended. Uh, if you want it to be compatible with a PC, it's already set in that mode when you buy the WD elements. Um, but if you want it to be compatible with a Mac and a PC, you click on XFAT. So it's important to have XFAT as your format and your scheme guide partition map, um, not master boot record or Apple partition map. Make sure it's kept on guide partition map. Then what you want to do is erase. All right, then it erases the WD elements, in this case 2621 version. Um, and it, it gives you an, um, a chance to back up to Time Machine, but I want to show you a little bit more uh, before we go through that um, that option. All right, so it says decide later. In this case, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bypass that for a moment. Yeah, so guys, once you've erased the WD elements, you should get a message just like this. And it will say erase process is complete. Click done to continue. So you click on done. And you'll see that the blue line will be going right across where it says two terabytes, it's completely blue, uh, where it's been wiped, yeah? So there's no partition at this moment in time. All right, guys, what I wanna do now is partition it. So I'll click on where it says partition, just above, up the top here. All right, and you know, it's got a full circle, um, as in a whole um, circle in this case. All right, so on the right hand side, it's got the options, it will say name, untitled, XFAT. So at the moment, the whole of this is able to be used on a PC or a Mac. But what I want to do is have part of this for my time machine and part of it um, for the PC and for the Mac. So what you do then is what we need to do is make part of it journaled. Once you make part of it journaled, it gives you the plus option down the bottom here. And you click plus, and you notice it splits the um, circle into two halves. One half is gonna be, like I said, 
the half for the PC and Mac and the other half will be for my time machine. So the highlight, highlighted section, that will be my Mac and PC. So I'm going to name that Mac and PC. But because I need this to be changed, it won't be called journaled, I'll leave it as XFAT. So the side that says Mac and PC is XFAT, so it's compatible with both PC and Mac. And then you've got the side on the right hand side, which is now untitled, which has got journaled to the right of it. Because I want to I want to keep it journaled because it's going to be my time machine backup for the for the Mac. All right. Um, I've got a separate hard drive, so I want to keep that one for the PC as my, my priority. This will be the backup for the Mac. Yeah. So on the right hand side, um, that will be my backup for the Mac. And on the left hand side of the terabyte. So um, you can actually move this around. Actually, you don't have to keep it in one place. Yeah. But in this case, I want to keep it. Um, quite balanced so I have I have uh, more space on the side that we for time machine yeah so I'm gonna name that time machine because that's where my backup files will be going in case of any issues with my PC or my Mac in the future obviously in this case the Mac so time machine will go in there and I want to apply apply that so in my Mac will be 886 gigabytes and my time machine will be 1.11 terabytes a little bit bigger I mean you can do it have however you want but it would make more sense having your, your time machine backup files as a bit more space just in case you want to drop more files in there in the future etc as backup um yeah so we're going to apply that 